Submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning. In the morning, your light can
is coming, coming. Joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. Oh, praise to oh, praise to King Jesus. I know joy is coming. Joy is coming. One more time. Though the night may, Though the night may seem weary, joy is coming, coming, joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. Oh, praise to oh, praise to King Jesus. Cause I know joy is coming. I know joy is Joy is coming. Hallelujah. 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 Joy is coming. You're so worthy, Lord. so
us to triumph. That beautiful name that causes us to win. We call on the name. Jesus Jesus is that mighty name. That powerful name. That powerful name. That powerful name. Yeah. It's mighty. It's mighty.
this place today can we give the Lord a shout of praise nothing nothing is impossible for him he's your portion he's your healer he's your ever-present help in a time of need and he deserves all the glory and all the honor in this place he is who he says he is and he will always do what he promises to do Right now, just as we were in a time of worship, I was thinking about a trip I took yesterday. I had a funeral in Secunda and I had to fetch some family in Pretoria, which is not really en route, but we did the, we did the trip. And I don't know if you saw the thick fog that was all over Johannesburg. <laughs> I couldn't see the front of my car. That's how thick the fog was. And I had my flashing lights on and I drove really slowly and I'm not gonna lie, I was really scared. I was scared because cars were swarming past me and I couldn't see around me and I've never driven in conditions like that and I was panicking a little bit and you know, along the way to Secunda, there were six different accidents six accidents and the ambulances were driving up and down and it felt like absolute chaos but while there was chaos around me this thick fog covered us and some of you today your circumstances are like that thick fog and all you can see as I look to the front of my car the only thing I could look to was that one white line and I said if I could just keep my eyes on that one white line I can get through this fog I can get through this circumstance I can get where I'm going safely and today I want to encourage you if you could just keep your eye on your father if you could just keep your eyes on Jesus it doesn't matter how thick that fog is of your circumstances around you. Nothing is impossible for Him and He will get you through it. And I'm standing here today and along the way, I, I realized people were in trouble and I got the privilege of praying for some people. 
and saying, God, in this circumstance, could you be bigger? Could you be higher? Could you be greater? Could you swoop into the room? Could you, the glory of the Lord come and intervene on their behalf? I pray healing. I pray wholeness because that's who you are and because that's what you bring. And today, I don't know what circumstances you may be facing, but He is your healer. He is your portion. He is your ever-present help in your time of need. I love Isaiah 40 verse 12. It talks about the glory of God. Sometimes we need to read the Word to be reminded how glorious and magnificent and all-powerful our God is. It says, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of His hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains and scales and hills? Who, who made the earth? Who picked up the dust and blew life? into Adam and into Eve. Who? It's our God. And it goes on to say in Isaiah 40 verse 28, it says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. Say everlasting. The Creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Say unsearchable. He gives power. Say power. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases their strength. Say, God, you are my strength. Lord, right now we want to lift up your name higher higher than all our circumstances, higher than our problems, higher than any other name, God, higher than sickness and disease, God, higher than the strategies of the enemy playing against us, God. Lord, we thank You that no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper in Your name. God, we thank You that sickness and disease is healed in Your name. God, we thank You that You are reaching into our circumstances even now and You are faithful so faithful to complete the good work that You have started right in this place today. And so now we pray, Lord, would You come and move like only You can move in a powerful, mighty way on our behalf. Open our eyes and our hearts that we could see what You want us to see and receive what You have for us today in Your matchless and in Your powerful Name. And all of God's people said, Come on, church, can we give the Lord a massive shout of praise in this house today? He is good, He's faithful, and He deserves all the glory. Hallelujah. Can we give it up for our incredible worship team? Aren't they amazing, so spirit-led? Well, I'd love you to tell your neighbor how good they're looking this morning. Give them a high five as you take your seats today. You guys are looking fresh and cool and all praised up in this place. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to the City Life Encounter. You are at our Lone Hill location. And I don't know about you, but it is good to be in the house. Amen. It's good to praise His name. I want to give you a warm welcome. If you are here for the very first time as a guest in this house, I want to say welcome to you. And you may have arrived as a visitor, but our heart for you is that you would get to know that City Life Church is one big family and we kind of love you already. (laughs) So we'd love you to just put your hand up if you are a visitor. Our hosts are going to come around with a card. We'd love you to fill it in. Welcome in the center over here. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on the side here. Welcome on the side. Yeah, look at all our visitors. Come on, let's give them a massive round of applause to all of our amazing visitors in this house today. (laughs) The hosts are going to give you a card. Keep your hand up if you don't mind till you get one. We'd love you just to fill out that card with your details. In this week, you will be invited to a meet the pastor's dinner, which is going to be awesome and gives us the chance to tell you all the amazing things that God is doing in this house. Amen. Come on, we want to say welcome. Well, it's time for the offering. Woo! Visitors, you can put your card in the offering basket when it comes down in a few moments. But I want to start by saying, how many of you know that what you perceive, 
what you perceive, say perceive, can impact what you receive. Come on, what you perceive about God, what you perceive about your finance, what you perceive about God's goodness and greatness and ability to give you abundantly can determine what you receive. Because how many of you know if you don't believe you won't be sowing. (laughs) If you didn't believe that God is your provider, you wouldn't be trusting Him with the seed that you have to sow. Isn't it interesting that so often the world tells you that seeing is believing? Am I right? But how many of you know that that's not what God says? In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, it says we walk by and not by That means that we first have to trust Him before we're going to see His hand at work. Am I right? Before you will receive a harvest, there's a seed that has to be sown. It's the kingdom of opposites. If you want more, become less. If you want to see a harvest, you've got to sow what you got. So often we trust God with all eternity, our salvation. We trust Him with healing. God, heal my family. God, heal me. God. But when it comes to our finances, it's, God, you know what? I just got to keep a little bit this month in case. I'm saying, church, it's time to trust Him even there. The world says seeing is believing. I'm saying you walk by faith and not by sight. Let me help you here. This is a matter of fear versus faith. Some of you need to have faith over your fears because God is your provider and He will never see you without, amen. And so there's a story, I love the Bible because it always tells us how God responds to faith, how God moves in people's lives, amen. And in Genesis chapter 26, It's the story of Isaac, the son of Abraham, and he's in a place called Gerar. Say Gerar. Now you're roaring. It's awesome. He's in a place called Gerar. And what happens is Gerar has a massive famine coming into the land. And Isaac decides he's going to take himself and his family to Egypt to a place where there is no famine so that he doesn't get impacted by the poor economy that's going to come with the famine. I don't know about you, but if we were facing a famine, I'd probably say, Pastor Nick, let's move house. But you know what? The Lord tells Isaac to stay in Gerar. He says, Isaac, you need to stay where you are because that's where my promise for you will come to pass. That's where you will see the generations that I have promised your father and I promise you. That's where you're gonna find my provision. Well, isn't it awesome that he doesn't operate like the world in seeing is believing. Everybody that saw what was happening in the land feared and they were trembling and they probably prepared a big storehouse and hung on to all of their groceries in case, but not Isaac. I love Isaac. You see, Isaac walks by faith and not by sight. So even in a place called Gerar, he is sowing a seed. When everybody is hanging on to their seed, he's saying, not my God. My God said, this is where my promise comes from. And so this is where I'm gonna sow. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So in Genesis 26 and verse 12, we see Isaac do the most incredible thing. He comes opposite to what he sees and he operates in faith. And as he sows his seed, it says that Isaac planted crops in that land. Say that land, that very land, that very place called Gerar, where God said, stay. There is a famine, but I still want you there because I've got more for you. Say more. So Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year, say same year, that same year he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed his faithfulness. City Life Church, the Lord wants to bless your faithfulness where you are. And what He is asking is, do you have enough faith? 
to sow a seed in a time where it looks to like it, there's lots happening in our economy. It looks like we should be hanging on. And God says, if you would just sow, if you could change your perception, what you perceive is what you receive. If you could sow your seed, there is a hundredfold blessing with your name all over it. If you receive it, give the Lord a shout of praise in this place today. He is faithful. I'd love you to stand to your feet as you ready your hearts and prepare your seat to sow. Our hosts are gonna come around with an offering basket. On your uh, armrest is a snap scan on the screens, banking details. We have card machines. We wanna make it as easy as possible for you to take your seed and to put it into good soil that is City Life Church so that the kingdom can be furthered, so that thousands of people can be impacted by the love of God. Who's ready to praise as we sow our seed? Let's do it. I'll pray. 
sowing a seed in faith. He is faithful. Let's pray. Father, we thank You that You are our provider, that You are always going ahead of us to make a way. And so right now, Father, I thank You for every person who has sown a seed into Your kingdom so that thousands of people can come to know You as their Lord and Saviour, so that City Life Church can make an impact in our city with Your name glorified, God. Lord, I pray for every person, every family that has sown a seed. Father, I pray that You would open the floodgates of heaven over their lives, over their family, over their finances, and over their employment, God. Lord, I thank You that every seed sown will produce a great harvest for Your kingdom purposes. We pray this in Your matchless and in Your powerful Name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Can we give the Lord one more shout of praise in this place? He's so worthy. He's so good. Can we give it up for our amazing worship team? They have got all the moves, all the voice, (laughs) all the musical instruments. They're just amazing. I'd love you to take your seat as you go down. Give your other neighbor a high five and tell them how amazing they praised in that last song. You could hear them and they encouraged you even in your praise. Well, yes, Jen. Happy birthday, Jen. It's her birthday today. I promised Jen because I made her wear it that I would wear it. (laughs) Come on, we have our bathroom renovation still busy happening right now. But next week we are going to pull back the curtain and reveal the most gorgeous bathrooms to you, City Life Church. I want to thank you for your patience, for using the kiddies' bathroom area. I know it's difficult with time and all of that, but you guys have been excellent. Give yourselves a round of applause. We have got such a beautiful bathroom reveal for you next Sunday. So you can't miss church. You've got to be one of the first to see it. It's going to be gorgeous. Pastor Nick reckons we're going to have to call people. Come, we're starting our service. No more selfies in our gorgeous bathrooms. Amen. If you are here for the first time, we'd love to invite you for a complimentary cup of tea and coffee in our amazing cafe straight after today's encounter. We are family. We love to mingle. We love to meet. We love to do life together. So please come and join us straight after the encounter. We also have a parents lounge, which is to my right hand side and most of your left hand side. If you have a little one in the encounter with you today and they get a little bit niggly, don't panic. We have have a parents lounge full of games and toys. There's a change table. There's a live feed so you don't have to miss a thing today. Both of you can enjoy today's experience. I'd love to encourage you that maybe next week you can check your little one in at City Kid. Don't we have one of the best kids ministries across the whole of Johannesburg? So from the ages of one until 12, you can check your kids in at City Kids. They are going to learn about Jesus, learn about the Father's heart and have the best time. So make sure you do that next week. In other breaking news, won't you turn your attentions to the screens and look at our city anchors. Hello and welcome everyone. It is so lovely to have you join us today. Here at City Life, we have a beautiful volunteering culture and we're looking for new volunteers in the following areas. Firstly, city kids to help out with the little ones at the welcome desk, the hosting team, as well as special special events throughout the year. If you'd like to volunteer, please head right over to the welcome desk after the encounter or email info at citylifechurch.cf.za. Absolutely, we cannot wait to serve with you. Well, Church, it is an exciting time here at City Life Church as we have a few events coming up in the month of July. Firstly, we have our date night for married couples hosted by pastors Nick and Bianca right here at our Lone Hill location on Thursday the 13th of July at 6.30 p.m. The cost is just 250 Rand per couple. It includes delicious meal, a special guest speaker, and of course, great company. Trust me, married couples, you do not want to miss it. There will also be childcare available at just 30 Rand per child. So please head over to the welcome desk right after this encounter to secure your tickets or send an email through to info at citylifechurch.co.za. Also coming up is the Stronger Men's event which will be hosted by Pastor Nick right here at our Lone Hill location on Saturday the 15th of July from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Here's some more info. Hey City Life Church, so glad that you are in the house today. Come on, 
I want to tell you things are just heating up. We have had so many testimonies of God doing amazing things at both our Clearwater and our Lone Hill location. God is moving. Come and be part of our prayer meeting this week, Tuesday, our hour of prayer, our power hour of prayer from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, we want to see God answer that which you're trusting him for in the season. Then later in the month of July, we have our stronger conference our stronger conference we have dr mark strong together with an amazing team from the united states they presently uh, in uganda on their way through kenya through zimbabwe and then they will be um, in south africa ministering only at city life church we are so so excited to have them here on thursday is our date night i want to encourage you if you're a married couple also i'm broadening that if you're dating at the moment you're engaged you're courting um, why not come make a time to come on the thursday the 13th of july to our date night and then saturday man this is gonna be a epic day filled with activities entertainment worship the preaching of god's word it is going to be a life-changing moment for us as men and i know we often late to register i want to encourage all the men in the house register today you do not want to miss this well here's dr mark strong with more on these events hello city life church i'm dr mark strong we are so excited myself and our team about being with you in a couple weeks at city life church we are going to have a great time in God. We've been here in Africa for about, when we get to you, it'll be about a month. And we've been sharing, we've been seeing God do some powerful things and we believe it's going to continue. So we're excited about ministering to the couples. We're excited about being with the men on a Saturday. And we're going to also be super hyped and excited about being in your congregations on Sunday morning. So expect to see you there, hope to see you there, want to see you there. And we're going to believe God for great things. God bless you. We love you. And we look forward to being with you. Great food, great fun, and powerful and inspirational messages, all for just 200 Rand per person. Trust me, men of City Life Church, you do not want to miss it. Please head over to the welcome desk right after the encounter to secure your tickets or send an email through to info at citylifechurch.co.za. Yes, so we also have our baby dedications coming up on the 23rd of July at our Lone Hill location or on the 30th of July at our Clearwater location. If you'd like to dedicate your baby, head right over to the welcome desk and write your name down or email info at citylifechurch.co.za. That's right. We'd also like to extend a huge thank you to everyone who donated to our winter warm and fed drive. Due to your generosity, we were able to give 145 people from under-resourced communities blankets, beanies, socks, mm. scarves, and gloves and also, of course, some delicious soup. So if you contributed, we thank you, because this would not have been possible without you, City Life Church. Well, church, that brings us to the end of this week's church news. We hope you enjoy the encounter, have a stronger Sunday, and we'll be back again next week with some more of your church news. Oh, come on, church. Anyone excited to be in the house today? Can we stand to our feet one more time? Come on, as we honor the Word of God. Is there anybody in here who can say, God has been better than good to me? Come on. I'm not worthy of any praise, but there is a God in heaven who's worthy of all the praise. Come on. He's worthy. Is there anyone who's been set free in this house? Anyone who's had some doors open for them? Come on. Anyone who's had some chains fall off them? Come on. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah, come on. I wanna tell you, we had such a powerful prayer meeting this week. If you missed our prayer meeting, you missed out, come on. How many of you know God is moving in our city? He's moving in our church. We're seeing testimonies breaking out all over our people of the God of miracles coming through. I wanna declare over you today, there is nothing that our God cannot do. He is the God of the impossible. Can I get an amen today? Come on. 
You know, last night I was praying and the Lord said, you know what? He, I want to be careful how I say this. He did not put a burden on my heart for our country because our country is heading the wrong way. He put a burden on my heart for us as the people of God to pray and give thanks for what He's about to do in our nation in Jesus' Name. Too many of us, I want to tell you the solution to our nation's issues is on the lips of a praying church, is on the lips of our declaration. Too many times I'm hearing, there's no hope for our country. Our country's going the wrong way. Well, no, I wanna introduce you today to the God of the impossible because He makes all things possible in Jesus' Name. Come on. I don't care if I'm the only pastor in our city who's declaring today that there will be an end to load shedding because of the glory of God, because God came through with a solution to something that seemed impossible. You know, we live in the best country. I love what Pastor B was saying about Isaac and Gerar and, and, and him thinking he needed to go somewhere else. I'm here with a word from heaven. You do not need to seek another land when God is gonna bless you in this land. This land is phenomenal. This country is phenomenal. And I wanna tell you, say not just for South Africa, but for the continent of Africa, Kenako, now is our time. Now is the time to shine. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Come on. God is turning it around. That other nations used to take from us. Well, it's a turnaround that we're going to start making an impact on other nations across the world in Jesus' Name. You know, in 2015, I was on a U.S. trip. I'd gone to Bethel Church and, and uh, had some time with Pastor Bill Johnson. I was in Los Angeles and uh, I was going to meet with a, a pastor who's a dear friend of City Life Church, Pastor Judah Smith. And uh, I was there and it was two days before I was to meet with him. And at two in the morning, I get a phone call telling me that my father has passed away. And I, I, I'm not sure what to do. It's two in the morning. I walk downstairs. It's a hotel in LA. Things are still pumping. There's lots of activity. And you kind of like just in this dwell, you don't know what to do. You're like a deer in the headlights. And I say to someone, yo, I just got news that my father's passed away. And they go, oh, okay. And they kind of walk away and just like carry on. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. This is strange, you know. They just kind of carried on doing what they were doing, you know. So I thought, well, I've got to book a flight. I've got to get back to South Africa. And so I, I, I get out the phone and I find my airline's details in America. It's a 24-hour call line. I phone the call line only to get a voice prompt saying, you are caller number 112. How at two in the morning, you are caller number 112. It will take, and then they give some ridiculous time. I sat waiting on the line, no one ever came back. And then I, I, I thought, you know what, we're, we're, we're two in the morning, but in South Africa, it's daytime. I'm gonna say, phone the same airline in South Africa. I phoned through to South Africa. This lady answers the phone. She's like, hi, how are you? And I said, hey, I'm phoning from America. Sorry, my airtime is not so good. And she goes, how can I help you? And I said, well, what's happened is my, my, my father's died. And she goes, what? And I said, yes, my father. She goes, no. I said, yes, my, my father's passed away, thinking it's gonna be like a business call. She had compassion, she had love. She said, I'm so sorry to hear about your dad. How as we, as an airline, how can we help you to get you back home to South Africa? I wanna tell you, you will not find that anywhere else in the world. We have the best people in this nation and where there is good people that love God, a miracle can happen in Jesus' Name. Come on, there is hope hope for our nation. It's time to get excited about South Africa, not speak like everyone else downwards at the water cooler. I'm speaking to the room here today that we're going to start speaking things up. Even if in your heart you're struggling with it, let's call those things that are not as if they were. Come on. I speak life. Our nation is turning around. Jesus is for us. God is for us. And in our nation, revival will break out in Jesus' Name. Come on. Can we lift our hands towards heaven, Father? We bring the beautiful nation of South Africa, Father. And Lord, while we love the flora and the fauna, we love the people more, Father. 
We thank You for the beautiful people of South Africa, Lord. We thank You, Lord, that You have not forgotten us. I declare right now for ingenuity, for wisdom, that there will be a turnaround in business and job opportunities, that, Lord, we will source the things that the rest of the Lord wants, the rest of the world wants in Jesus' Name. I thank You, Lord, for natural resources that we will leverage to be a standout country in a difficult global economic time. I speak life over us. I speak life over the people of God, Lord, that they will not go under. They will go over in Jesus' Name. That there will be leaders that rise up in this church, business leaders, leaders in gateways, in the medical, in entertainment, Father, that will take this world by storm. And when they do, it will be for the glory of God in Jesus' Name. Right now, Lord, as we prepare our hearts for Your Word, Lord, we do not neglect the gathering of the saints, Father, but we know on these prayer walls, there are needs in this church. There are petitions, there are prayers. And Father, right now we stand together, wherever two or three come together, there you are in the midst of them. Your manifest presence is here. Wherever two or three gather together and ask anything, it shall be done as per your word, Lord, that Father, we bring every need, every prayer request, every petition on every single one of these cards and we declare yes and amen. Father, we're not coming to You, Father, with a formula. We're trusting You for a solution, God. Father, today, would You open our eyes and ears to hear from You. I have a message, a sermon, Father, but You have an anointed Word for the people of God. Less of me, more of You. In Jesus' Name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, I'm excited to be here. God is about to do something. Before you take your seat, we're gonna read the Word of God. Just wanna remind you that on the 15th, Saturday the 15th of July, our men's event, there is a team led by a dear friend of City Life Church, friend of pastors James and Ginny, Pastor Mark Strong and his team. They're here in Africa. They're presently ministering in Uganda on their way to Kenya, Botswana, Zimbabwe. And then on the 13th and 15th, our date night, as well as our men's conference, his team will be here. Come on, ministering the Word of God. It's time to get excited. Come on, I've asked him to do a video clip. He's gonna, uh, we'll put that on social media as soon as we receive it. But I wanna tell you, we've got international speakers at our event. It's about to go down in Jesus' Name. Come on. And so I want to encourage you to bring family and friends. My word today is really a part two of my word last week. My word last week was the tension at the table. My word today is entitled the tension of change. Turn to your neighbor, tell them the tension of change. I know that right now I have wine on the stage and some people, that's all you've been focusing on. I'm looking right now at the auditorium. Who would be interested in coming as being part of an illustration of tasting the water turning into wine? By show of hands here this morning, come on. By show of hands. That was a trick question. Father, you have seen from heaven the dodgy people in our congregation, the ones that are here just by the grace of God. Father, you have seen, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask for a double portion upon them that, Lord, you would highlight your wonder of your ways in Jesus' name. Come on. All right, well, we're gonna turn in the Word of God. It's gonna be up on the screens. We're following along in John chapter two. John chapter two. We're reading from verse one to 10. It says this. The next day, There was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there and Jesus and His were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities. So Jesus' mother told them, they have no more. There's some tension happening. Verse 4, dear woman, that is not our, Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, get this, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Let me help you here. Each stone vase 
held a hundred liters of water. You're talking 600 liters of water in total. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water and the jars had been filled. He said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions when the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, say lot to drink, come on. He brings out the less expensive wine, but you have kept the best until now. That's a prophetic word for us. God has kept the best for you until now. Your best days are now. The best days are ahead of you. Your best days are about to break through. Your best miracles are about to happen. Turn to your neighbour. Tell him your best is yet to come. Come on. And you can grab a seat. You can grab a seat this morning. This is a story of Jesus changing water into wine. And so how many of you know that when we're discussing changing water into wine, we need to discuss what change means? If you're writing notes this morning, I want you to get excited if you're writing notes. Come on, who are the people writing notes? Give us a wave, come on. Your point number one, and I'm gonna declare this over us today. The God that never changes has the power to change everything. The God that never changes has the power to change everything. See, the story of changing the water into wine means that we have to realize that this side of eternity, our reality is perpetually found in a state of change. And that leads me to two questions this morning. We're, we're, we're 4D, so we want some interaction this morning. How many of you out there enjoy change? When things change, you can handle it. You enjoy the challenge of change by show of hands. How many of you enjoy change? I want to ask today, when things change, how many of you today have difficulty with change? Come on. That seems to be the majority of us, right? I know what it's like, right? Lord, if we could just, everything could just stay the same, please. Come on. Isn't it interesting that so many of us, we look for the same, but we live in a world of constant change. I don't know if you realize this, but God placed us on a planet that moves at 30 kilometers per second around the sun. There is a consistent change, 30, 60, 90 100, we just moved 120 kilometers in four seconds because God wanted to emphasize that change is inevitable. Change is part of our reality. Change is part of our planet. How many of you know that so often what we should fear changes? The world comes to us with a message. How many of you know that when you tune into morning television, right, you're getting ready for work, they'll tell you that we should fear potatoes, the next time they're telling us potatoes are actually good for you. The next time it's like, don't drink full cream milk, right? The next time drink fat-free. No, don't drink fat-free milk. Go back to full cream milk, you know? Don't have butter on your bread. Butter is bad. Go to margarine. Then we find out margarine is really bad and really we should go back to butter. Come on. How many of you know that, that carbs used to be good? We used to avoid things that had fat until everything became fat free. Now our enemy is not fat, our enemy is carbs. Anyone know what I'm putting down? How many of you know that we should drink the water? Then we shouldn't drink the water. Then we do an, a survey and the water is the same as the bottled water. Anyone know what I'm putting down? That change is inevitable. Change is part of our reality. How many of you were ever accustomed to a television set this kind of size? by show of hands. Millennials, we used to watch these things, man, right? A TV this size, hello. How many of you, your first television was black and white? 
Then Michael Jackson said, it don't matter if you're black and white. And then we got color. Hallelujah. Come on. How many of you, color TV, you remember color TV, right? How many of you remember that TV was not on 24 hours a day? We had limited channels, right? How many of you remember that TV used to come on at four and it used to end at midnight? How many of you remember there was a time where the gospel of Jesus Christ was on national television on most countries around the world? How many of you remember those days, right? It's interesting how fast our television in a very, very short space of time has developed. We've gone from what's called CRT, cathode ray tube, to uh, plasma, remember plasma, the heavy gas ones, right? Then LED, then some of you started with this size LED to this side. Some of you are sitting with 100 inches, hallelujah, LED. Some of you all fell for the gimmick of the 3D. Remember the 3D, you had to get rid of your TV, even though it was big, and get a 3D TV. Some of you chucked that out and you got the curved TV, come on. How many of you got the curved TV? Sorry, you fell for the gimmick right there. And now we're back to flat TVs. I want to say that the one thing on programming that was always the same, and I literally did the research on this, there was one program that was a top 10 program throughout Africa. You want to know what that is? In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spend most of my days. Sitting out, relaxing, playing our cool, spraying some b-ball outside the school when a couple of guys, they were up to no good. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. Should you move him with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air? Come on. Woo! <laughs> Throughout Africa, we were all tuned on little boxes, watching Will Smith as the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Then along came the cell phone revolution, right? How many of you ever had a phone like this? Come on. Come on. Anyone know these old school? Come on. It was like the Motorola with a flap, come on. And you were uber cool when you were walking through the mall, right? In fact, if you had a phone like this, so often you'd go into the ringtones and you'd press this button and this would happen, come on. And then you would let it ring for four rings like you didn't hear it, you know? It's like, I am someone important. Someone is phoning me, you know? Meanwhile, you phoned yourself. Does it, hi? Yes. The deal is a go. <laughs> and we ended up with this phone. Then we moved on. How many of you remember this? The Nokia 1610. Woo! Hey, I see some people pointing. You had this. Come on. The bigger the phone, the better, right? I remember you used to be able to accessorize this with different colored uh, covers, right? I remember having a phone like this that had a gold aerial. Then you had it out on your pants. And then you were down there like walking around. I, I'm cool, man. I got a phone right here, right? And then we realized big phones were not cool because change is inevitable. Then we pulled out the little Ericsons. Anyone know what I'm putting down, right? We moved to the little, little Ericsson phone and then the ringtone wasn't good enough. We were not happy with a single tone ringtone. We moved to polymorphic ringtones, which could play multiple sounds at the same time. And then you were downloading. Remember trying to download or make your own ringtones. Then we were uber cool. Then we were like, big phones are not cool. How small can you go? And we got the little Ericsons. Anyone know what I'm putting down? Come on. You end up with this tiny little phone, right? Because change is inevitable. Do you, do you realize that in the 90s, we dreamed, that's not good English, we dreamt of a time Thank you. We dreamt, there's people holding me accountable. We dreamt of a time in our lives that we would have a phone and be able to see the person on the other side. That we could actually hold a conversation. Right now, for the majority of us, you have a device that you can make a call and see the other person. How many of you use that function? Right? Right? Very little of us. Let me just put that out there, right? Lest they see you without makeup. Anyone know what I'm putting down? Come on. Lest they see you for how you really look, right? If someone took a time machine from the 90s to the year 2023, show us your phone, show us your device. Wow, that's amazing, right? So how do you use it? Well, what I do is I speak a voice message and then I send it to someone and then they play back the voice message They'd look at you and say, you know what we had before cell phones was walkie-talkies. 
and they would do the same thing. You would speak a whole message over and out. Then they would speak. It's like we're progressing, but we're regressing. Anyone know what I'm putting out, right? But the reality is, is that we live in a world of perpetual change. Yet in the middle of an unbridled, unparalleled, unprecedented change, allow me to remind you that there is a powerful constant in a world full of variables. His name is Jesus. Come on. Technology may change, but our God will never change. Come on. Seasons in your life will change, but our God God will never change. Ideologies and social constructs will change, but God will never change. Political agendas will rise and fall, but God will never change. Relationship status, statuses, help us, Jesus, will change, but God will never change. And the hair on our head will change. Our bank balance will change. People in your life will change. Thoughts in your mind will change, but our God will never change, hallelujah. In a world where it feels so often like things are out of control, Things are moving at a pace beyond what we can comprehend or beyond our power to remain firm. There is a God who in Malachi 3.16, I love this. He says, I am the Lord. I do not change. Come on. James chapter 1 verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of a heavenly lights who does not change change like a flickering shadow. We have a God in heaven who does not change. Can I get a hallelujah in this place today? In a world of influences, in a world of politicians, in a world of Hollywood elites who are driven in their core by the tactics of the enemy who are trying to implement radical change in culture, redefine very basic concepts, very basic things that you and I, we understand, but it's now the elephant in the room. We can't call it what it is anymore. Come on. Not in line with the Word of God, but contrary to God. I've got good news for you. The good news this morning is that while there has been an acceleration of the enemy's agenda, there is an acceleration of what God is about to unleash on the planet. When the enemy comes in like he is at the moment, like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard and God begins to move. We're destined for an end time harvest like the church of Jesus Christ has never seen before. It's coming, church. It's coming, come on. We as the church have the power to speak things that are not as if they were, to speak into the atmosphere of anarchy, of chaos, of forces that believe they can deconstruct the truth. What is truth today? Let me help you if you didn't know, Jesus is the truth. Let me give you the antidote to all the change that you and I are experiencing. Every time you turn on the television, Something's propagated in Hollywood. We have it in South Africa at the same time, shoeshine. The same distruth, the same disinformation. Come on, in a moment, let me help you. What's the antidote? Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus Christ is the same. Can we as the church get back to the basics, get back to the truth, anchor ourselves to the one who does not change today? Come on. See, I don't care what the voices that are emerging are saying. The voices that are saying, I don't believe God is real. I don't believe that's true. Let me help you. You do not have the power to change that Jesus is Lord. You do not have the power, I want to tell you, to change His Word. You can't change what Jesus did on the cross. You can't change the fact that Jesus died on the cross. Hello. You cannot change the fact that the tomb is empty. You cannot change the fact that God is moving across this world like He has never before. We're destined for a season of the miraculous. We're destined. I want to tell you this last week, 
We said in this encounter that we were raising our hands. We were bringing to the forefront loved ones who were far from God. I've done that two weeks in a row here. And we've called those things that are not as if they were. We've called out loved ones far from God. I got a testimony. I got a testimony, church. Come on. I got a testimony to give you. Come on. There was a lady in her church. She said her dad has been a Muslim her entire life. Last weekend, he gave his life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, hallelujah. He is the constant. He is the sure foundation in a world of chaos, movement, agendas. Can we anchor ourselves to the one who never changes? Come on. I have a Bible on this platform. You know, one of the biggest arguments of people that I come across is that the Bible has changed. I wrapped this Bible in plastic because this is one that I was gifted. It sits in our home. This Bible was printed in 1772. (laughs) This is 250 year old Bible, right? And every one of the world's agenda wants to tell you that the Bible has changed. You know what I did? I looked up Matthew 24 verse 35 in this 250 year old book. It says this, it says heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will never pass away. I've got good news for you, church. I don't want you to believe what the enemy is telling you, that the Word of God has changed, that the Word of God is inconsistent, that we've dabbled with it, we've twisted it. In 1947, we discovered the the Dead Sea Scrolls. Anyone heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? These were scrolls that had painstakingly been written by scribes of the Word of God. They predated any version of the Bible that we had. And when we go through those same scrolls of Psalms, of Isaiah, of Malachi 3.16, it says, I am the Lord. I do not change. God has not changed, church. His promise to you today has not changed. Turn to someone today. Say, God has not changed. See, in this auditorium, I want to tell you, the seats may change. (laughs) The technology may change. The look and feel may change. Come on, the lights may change. My dress code will change, but the Word of God will not change. I want to tell you our worship team, sometime along the line, the worship's going to feel younger. You're going to feel like, I don't know if I really connect with that. But that's not a time to get offended. That's a time to get excited. Because I want to tell you, when our worship gets younger, our congregation attracts young people. How many of you want to see your kids and your grandkids coming to know the Lord in Jesus' name? Come on. I have a vision for this church that this is going to be full with you as well as a multitude of teens and young adults who are radical for the purposes of God, who have really realize the futility of trying to hold on to technology, to media, to things that are persistently changing and realizing in a moment that there is one who does not change. His plans for you are good. His promises are yes and amen. Can I get an amen today, today, church? My second point today Coming back to the story, I feel like we did a big detour there, come on. Coming back to the story of the water into wine, point number two, change can be triggered by expectancy. I want you to see that. They ran out of wine, say that, they ran out of wine. See the dodgy section in this auditorium, know what it is like to run out of wine. Lord, the Lord is speaking to you, come on. Mary, in that moment, asks Jesus to do something, and Jesus' response to her is, it's not my time. Mary asks him, you see, Jesus' response indicates that he knew what Mary was demanding. How many of you know in conversation, if Mary's mom said, hey, Jesus, they're running out of wine, and Jesus was like, yeah, tough one, we're going to end the wedding early. Or Mary was asking Jesus, Jesus, they ran out of wine. She was not asking Jesus to go to Topset Spa, pick and pay, checkers to go and buy more alcohol. Mary was telling Jesus in that moment, would you show them your glory? Would you stand out? She was petitioning the Lord for a miracle in that moment. Would you show these people who you really are? How do we really know this? By the reply of Jesus. Mary says they're running out of wine. And Jesus' response is, 
It's not my time. So you're going to get this today. His response is, my time has not yet come. In other words, as Isaiah 60 verse 22 says, at the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. It's not my time to start showing people miracles. It's not my time to show people my Father's glory. It's not my time to reveal I am the Messiah, the Son of God, and the Word made flesh. What I love about this story is the response of Mary in that moment. She doesn't respond to Jesus saying, it's not his time. She turns to the servants and says, he's about to do something. I love that. He's about to do something. Jesus is saying, it's not my time. Mary is saying, get ready. He's going to tell you to do something in this. It looks like a contradiction but it's an affirmation of the miracle working power that was about to be released in that moment. Come on. We need to go back 30 years and we read about Mary in Luke chapter one and an angel of the Lord 30 years ago appears to her and says, Mary, you're gonna have a child. Mary, you're gonna have a son and he will be called Emmanuel. He will be God here on earth, the Word made flesh. He will be the manifestation of the glory of the Lord on this planet. She's been waiting 30 years. How's that? She sat with a promise for 30 years, waiting for the glory to be revealed. And here at a wedding, she says, you know what? I am done waiting. She creates in a moment an atmosphere for Jesus to do something. Come on. Anyone here waiting on a promise that they can say, he's about to do something, come on. Is there anyone in this house who's been saying, God, I've been waiting so long, but I'm gonna declare like Mary declared, he's about to do something on my behalf. He's about to move. He's about to bring a miracle. He's about to do a powerful thing on my behalf, come on. I don't care what people around you have said, the naysayers, it's not the right time. That season will come. Jesus is about to do something. See, when Jesus responds, He's saying, you know what? It's not on my calendar for today. It's not on my agenda for today. I wonder today if there's anyone radical enough to believe God for a miracle, to worship Him like He's about to change everything. Come on, can we give God a shout of praise like your miracle is about to happen? Can we lift our hands in this house today? Come on. It's not about the time, it's about the need. Come on. See, God's timing is never a lid on His children's need. Some of us have had bad theology. God, I'm desperate, I'm struggling, but in your time. God today from His Word wants to highlight, would you start placing a demand on heaven? Would you change gear and like Mary, begin to say, He's about to do something. Would you align your faith with what you see? I can't see anything, but inside I know God's about to break loose over the people of City Life Church. God's about to bring a miracle in my family. God's about to see my family saved, my husband saved, my wife saved, my kids coming to know the Lord in Jesus name. Father, for every person here right now, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your timing is not a lid on your children, Lord. Father, that today we would see that Mary creates an atmosphere of expectation. Church, today I wanna tell you the moment we create expectancy and a demand on heaven, God is about to show His glory. How do I know that? Jeremiah 33 verse three says, if you call upon me, I will show you what you have never seen before. It does not say, if you call on me, I will show you what you've never seen before in three months time in one year's time, when I'm ready, when I feel like it. Church today, can we be the people of God that begins to place a demand on our heavenly Father who wants to bless you. He wants to see you in a place of breakthrough. Come on. He never says it's in my perfect time. If Mary never created expectancy, the miracle in this moment would never have happened. Father, right now, I pray a spirit of expectancy in this room that, Father, we would begin to take you at our word. Take you at your word, God. 
that we begin to believe you like we've never done before, that we begin to believe that you are who you say you are. You are the God of impossible. Everything that we've said God couldn't do, we refrain, we turn back, we repent, and we say, God, actually today, I believe you can do it. I believe you can move. I believe you can heal. I believe you can bring breakthrough. I believe you can change circumstances. Some of you here today know what it's like to wait 30 years. I love what Mary does. She was like, nah, I'm done waiting. Today is the day. I love that. She never said, I wish God would show up. And then she sat fasting and praying. Listen, fasting and praying is good for a miracle. But Mary, she believed God and get ready. Jesus is about to move. He's about to save your family. He's about to turn things around. He's about to bring healing. I asked for that song. I believe you're my healer today because I believe some people have had things on your life that have lasted far too long. You are healed in Jesus' name. By His stripes, you are healed. You are fully recovered. Every cell in your body, healthy cell, multiply. Every sickness, disease, I cast you off the body in the name of Jesus. Pain, ailments, eyesight, uh, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, I call you out. Cancer, I call you out in this room and I cast you out in the name of Jesus. We're expecting today for a miracle. Come on. Scripture says that God will never leave His children hungry. See, Mary knew what it meant to create an atmosphere of expectancy. There's a difference, church, between an expectation and expectancy. We said last week about giving God the formula to our solution. God, when you open that door, then this will happen, then that will happen, and then I will have my miracle. That's an expectation. Expectancy says, God, I believe in your goodness. I believe in your love. I believe you as a healer. I believe your word to be true that I don't have to live a life of less than, but a life of more than. That God right now, I place a demand on heaven and I believe that God, you're gonna move. Come on. And so in this moment, Jesus converted this into this. He converted 600 liters of water into wine. I want you to get this today. In a moment, right? He converted water into wine. I wanna give you a deep truth here. You don't need a degree, even though in this church, we've got some very educated people. Come on. We've got people with doctorates in our worship team. Even our worship team are getting MBAs. Hallelujah, come on. But I wanna give you a deep theological truth, but you don't need a degree to get it. Here it goes. I want you to get this. Are you ready? Water is not wine. Water is not wine. Some of you are looking at me like we know that, right? I want you to know that where do you find water? We find water in dams. We find water in streams. We find water in the ocean. If we go on top of a mountain, there's a lake. We can find water there. But wine is not the same. Come on. Wine is not found in those places. What is that? Wine needs a process to happen. You see, for water, you just pick it up. For wine, you've got to plant a vineyard. You've got to grow the fruit. At the right time, you take the fruit, you crush the fruit, and then you put it into barrels for fermentation. Water is not wine because wine requires a process. Here's the point. Jesus came and He changed something that doesn't require a process into something that needs a process. You missed it this morning. Jesus required, He took something that doesn't require a process into something that does require a process. Things in life take time, but our God can transcend time. Hallelujah. He can make things that should require a process happen in a moment. He's not just the God of the process. He is the process. Some of you are saying, I need to get this. I need to have that. And when this happens, when that happens, then God, God says, would you come with expectancy in your heart today? I am the God of the process. You may not have the qualification on your CV, but I have seen your heart 
and I will favor you and they will come to you and say, you may not have all the qualifications we've been looking for, but we believe you're the right candidate and you will develop in this place of work. Why? Because God is the God of process. He can make things happen in an instant. He can make things happen in a moment. Can we believe God today that He is a miracle working God? Come on. In the middle of COVID, Pastor Bianca and I, we started church. Crazy. <laughs> In the middle of COVID. And someone comes to us. We don't even know how many people we got. We're doing online stuff. And someone comes to us and says, Pastor Nick, I've got a word from the Lord. A prophetic voice we trust. And he says, what should have taken the children of Israel 11 days took them 40 years to get to the promised land. What should take you 40 years will take you 11 days. He is the God of the process. He is the process. I stand two years later with the beautiful people of City Life Church, a booming church in Lone Hill, a fantastic church at Clearwater. God is moving. Our worship is off the chart. We got things coming up. People are getting saved. Thousands of people are getting saved in this church. God is the God of the process. He can fast track today. Some of you are saying, God, I don't know. Can we lift our hands if we're believing for God to fast track something over our lives right now? Thank you, God, for moving. Thank you, God, for fast tracking things. Come on. Thank you, Lord, of every hand raised, God. That, God, we're not going to hide away throwing things back into heaven to let them collect dust. No, we're pulling them off the shelves of our prayer list, blowing the dust off and declaring, now is the time. My God, you're about to do something in the name of Jesus. My God, you're about to turn this round. My God, you're about to do a miracle in Jesus' name. Come on. Hallelujah. Have you ever asked yourself, if you were coming from heaven and you had three years of ministry, that the first miracle you did, the first miracle you did would be healing a blind man, making a lame man walk, raising the dead. Why? Because your reputation would precede you. Jesus said, it's not my time because the reality is the miracle at the wedding was not the first miracle that was supposed to happen. But there was someone like you and me, and someone like the people of City Life Church, <laughs> who began to trust God and say, actually, I've been waiting for this long enough. Lord, do whatever He says. Mary, in that moment, created an atmosphere of expectation and God performed His first miracle. Church, that's hope for you and me. It's not about a party. It's not about a wedding. The point of the story is it doesn't matter how big or small, the thing that you're trusting God for, if you would create some expectancy on it, that God would move mightily on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. We can stand right now in this house. I've heard too many preachers speak about this water, the water into wine, the water into wine. And they said, you know what? Your miracle will happen at the perfect time. You'll just be sitting at home one day and healing will fall on you. A check will ping as an SMS on your phone. Can God do that? Sure. But that's not the theology of the miracle of the wedding. See, the reality is, how many of you know that wine is 85% water? See, Jesus could have just in an instant done the miracle, but He wanted to highlight there's a responsibility on us. See, the servants gave Jesus something to work with. 
God's saying to you today, can you give me something to work with? Can you begin moving in the direction of, can you in the middle of your water days have a sense of expectancy that I'm about to move mightily on your behalf? Can we as the people of God, as the people of City Life Church, hello, can we begin to understand that we've got to bring God something to work with? Come on. This week ahead, bring God something to work with. Trust Him with something. Did you notice that they brought the water that was used for ceremonial cleaning? That is not the kind of water that I would want in my miracle. Everyone's washed their hands. There's no soap back then. Like three days, this is my first time to wash my hands. Awesome. Fingernail, hair, eyelash. Can you imagine the servants in that moment? Ooh, it's about to go down. Come on. How do you know servants is a boring, mundane job? Suddenly Jesus brightened. I love that. There's some humor in this story. Jesus brightens up the day of the guys, the, the guys that were waitering at this wedding. They get the water and they're like, ooh, this is going to be good. So who do you want us to give it to, Jesus? Just this oak over here. No, no, no. Give it to the main guy. They're like, oh. It's about to go down. And they walk up to the main guy and he takes the water. They didn't see it had turned to wine. And he says, bring me the master of ceremonies. They're thinking, oh, it's about to go down in that moment. But I want to tell you that they brought something to Jesus and a miracle happened. They brought something that was a mess and Jesus turned it into a miracle. Can I get a hallelujah? Come on. If God can make wine out of water, God can make heaven out of your hell. Hello. If God can make wine out of water, He can bring a breakthrough out of your brokenness. He can create a future out of your past in Jesus' name. Come on. With every eye closed and every head bowed, in this auditorium today. Father, we thank You, God, that, God, You're here. Wow. Your presence is here. The anointing of God is in this room. I thank You, God, that today is a reminder of the fact that the God who never changes has the power to change everything, Father. Would You move mightily on the behalf of every single person here? Would you remind them right now, Lord, to get excited, to place a demand on heaven, to come with expectancy, to bring things that, that may look broken, may look incomplete, may look imperfect in the natural, but say, God, I'm at least bringing you this. And God, you can work with anything. God, you can work with anyone in Jesus' name. People here that said of your life that you're a nobody, you don't count. Let me remind you that God used something imperfect to change the whole trajectory of a celebration. God's about to use you to create a celebration of heaven because God's about to empower you to change your environment, change the place where you work, change your family in Jesus' Name. Come on. There are world changes in this room. What the enemy meant for evil, the Lord will turn for your good. And so, Father, with every eye closed and every head bowed in this house, if you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to the Word of God today. He loves you. He cares about you. His name is Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. In a world where you're your surroundings are persistently changing. He is the constant. He is a sure foundation. He is someone to anchor your life to. If you're here today and you've never invited Jesus into your heart, I wanna give you an opportunity to respond, to make Jesus Lord of your life. Come on. Maybe you did that a long time ago. Well, I wanna encourage you to come home today. He has a plan for you. The things that you've tried to substitute your life for are because you're missing a key relationship, the one that created you. And so this morning, if today you wanna to invite Jesus into your life, for the very first time or the first time in a long time, I'm gonna ask you to do a bold thing. I'm gonna ask you just to slip your hand up on the count of three so I can include you in my prayer. It's not about me looking, it's about heaven looking today. 
So here goes. One, He loves you. Two, He has an incredible plan for your life. And three, won't you lift your hand up right now today? Thank you. Thank you. That's bold. Thank you in the front here. Thank you on the side here. Thank you at the back there. Fantastic. Come on, don't miss this opportunity. If you want to pray this prayer, want you to slip your hand up. Once you've put your hand up, you can put it right back down once I've seen your hand. Is there anyone else in this place? Come on. All of heaven is watching right now. If today you want to invite Jesus into your heart, won't you lift your hand right up right now? Once I've seen it, you can put it down. Thank you. Thank you at the back there. Fantastic. We're going to pray this prayer all together today. I want you to pray this from your heart. Say this, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. I choose you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my past mistakes and make me new. In Jesus' name. Can we give those people a round of applause this morning? Come on. There's a host around you. They have a Bible and a card. If you could fill that in. Church, it's getting exciting here. You do not want to miss what God's doing. But this week, may I encourage you, when you wake up tomorrow, let's stop talking rubbish about our country. Let's start declaring life over our job, over our family. Come on over our country in Jesus' Name. Watch God do a miracle. Come on, I got the faith and I know you do too. God bless you. Have an incredible Sunday and we'll see you again next weekend.